Well, hello there. Uh, my name is Jay with CompuMatter and with ServerMatter. And I've taken the last three and a half days of my life to work on this Java uh, extension for guacamole, and this is its purpose. There are companies that are going to have employees scattered throughout their business. They may have hundreds of employees, um, second floor, fifth floor, 10th floor, whatever. And they're using guacamole, not uh, mainly to connect to inside systems from the outside world, but there's also going to be a use case where they need to connect to inside systems from the inside world. Now, guacamole doesn't really care which way you do it. It works the same way. Um, but the businesses might. So if you have employees that, let's say they're connecting to other systems within the business internally, not extern not from the outside in, but from the inside in. And that's an uncommon use case, but I run into it already with a business. And, uh, and so, and I can see where other businesses will have that need. Maybe they want to access a virtual machine on the server internally through a web browser <clears throat> to access QuickBooks that's on a VM or something. Um, but maybe that particular uh, employee or employees do not have the trust relationship that would allow them to do that same thing from the privacy of their own home. Uh, some users will, some users won't. And the way that um, we've gotten around this is to create an extension. We couldn't find a solution anywhere. We, we turned the internet upside down. We searched through artificial intelligence. There was nothing. So we've created a Java extension that links uh, to the Samba users in groups. We've created a new group called Guac Allow External IP. And if you're not a member of that group, you don't get to access it from the outside world. Um, and we could have done that conversely and said, if you um, are a member of the deny group, let's say, then you can't get in but then that would leave the default with everybody having access from the outside world. And even that I felt like was probably um, a move that we shouldn't make. We need to make the, the business aware of it, let them make them a member of that group. Anyway, let's show you the solution and um, we'll go from there. Now this is a very limited, not a lot of people are gonna need this. Uh, it's just it's a low use case, but those who need it are really gonna need it. So here we go. All right, so in front of us, we have the, uh, a lot of the files that I've used to construct this, but let me show you how this works to start with. Um, we've got a file that looks like this. It's got a bunch of users on the left, separated by a colon and uh, the groups that they are in fact a member of. One line per user. And that's generated again, by a cron on our end, uh, by a root user that has permission to do Samba, um, but you could hand construct this. Now the file, uh, the extension calls the Samba check external access from within the extension. So you can edit this file as an external user and call it anything you want. The important thing is when it's all said and done, You've got to be it. You've got to end up with an allow or a deny. That's what you have to send back to the extension. So you can use whatever technology you want to. In the end, once you've checked for the user ability to uh, use guacamole externally, you need to simply echo allow or deny. Don't echo anything else back to the extension or it's going to be interpreted as garbage and it'll fail no matter what. Um, now, in this script, uh, you'll notice also I'm using, I'm putting in the Tomcat homepage and, and things like this. This script will receive the username and the group that's called guac-allow-ext-ip, just like this. And so those two things you can count on. It's going to receive that group name and it's going to receive whatever the username is that has logged into guacamole. Okay, so I build my extension, um, but I've created a bash script called run it. It'll build the extension. I won't get into all the details of that right now, but let me show you 
the end result. Um, in this group files, I am currently a member of that group in that, in that text file you see there. So I'm going to bring in this VM. All right, this virtual machine is hosted off-site, not in our building, not on our internal network. and it lets us in no problem. We're on the outside world on a VM logging in. Now, I'm going to go to that text file and I'm simply going to change the, uh, I'm gonna change the group, say I'm not a member of that group, just scratch out that group from the list of groups that I'm supposed to be a member of in that text file. Okay, I don't have to rebuild the extension, you don't have to do anything else, just simply change what's in that text file. and now I can't log in. So the bash script in my case, check the text file, determine um, based on the scripting in my bash script uh, and extracting what groups I'm a member of, uh, they're not a member and just failed it altogether. Now you can use our same format text file and just put a username, a colon in the groups that they are a member of. Um, and if, if they're uh, not a member of that allowed group, then they'll fail. So from that standpoint, this should work with uh, most anybody's setup. Okay, now we're going to take that out of the equation and we're just going to bring over a browser on my local computer. I'm internal, right? Now I've just, I've just removed myself from being a member of the, of allow external access, but I should be able to log in from my ins inside the network with no difficulty. And I am, that's what I'm doing right now. So that is how it works. Uh, something else that I think you'll find handy, the logback XML file is a file within Guacamole that um, determines whether the logs are going to be debug logs or just conventional logs. So look for the logback XML file and if you want to change this root level from info to debug and you'll get substantially more output and then a file path to wherever you want that log to appear. And what appears in that log is, from what I can tell, the very same thing that appears in Catalina.out. Um, so I'm not sure why you need to identify it here, because it creates the other one anyway, and they seem to run concurrently. But I think this definitely works, and you look at the log file, it'll, it'll be dependable information. And you'll notice in the uh, SM, the check external access bash script that we're using, you'll notice that there is a lot of echoes that echo information to that log file so that you do have a way of troubleshooting what's going on. So that's a practice that I have found uh, to be very valuable through this process. Now, as far as what version of guacamole this will work with, is a bit of an unknown unknown for me there. I am using version 1.52 in the palm file that I generated the um, extension with um, and I'm, I'm getting a lot of intel from online because some of this I'm just not that familiar with or I'm not an expert on but some of these dependencies uh, I've used 1.3 and 1.3 because some of the reference material um, had recommended that which may, may be saying that's the minimum required guacamole version. The current version is 1.52, uh, but compiling it with that palm file, it works fine in my uh, version 1.52, as I've just expressed to you. And that's it. Um, short and sweet. I, I hope it helps somebody out there. It's certainly going to be perfect for our use case. And um, if you like the video, please click the like button. And if you would like to be on the short list, of videos like this that come out in the future, hit the subscribe button and you'll get the notice. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.